Welcome everybody. This is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe, where we read a few pages of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and then discuss what we've read. For those in the comments section, uh, there is a PDF to read along. Those who are watching the replay, I shall do my best to read so that you understand and you can understand what the discussion that follows is. So let's go to the top of page 244. The fear of death. To some, this is the cruelest of all the basic fears. The reason is obvious. The terrible pangs of fear associated with the thought of death in the majority of cases may be charged directly to religious fanaticism. So-called heathen are less afraid of death than the more civilized. For hundreds of millions of years, man has been asking the still unanswered questions, whence and whither? Where did I come from and where am I going? During the darker ages of the past, the more cunning and crafty were not slow to offer the answer to these questions for a price. Witness now the major source of origin of the fear of death. Come into my tent, embrace my faith, accept my dogmas, and I will give you a ticket that will admit you straight away into heaven when you die, cries the leader of sectarianism. Remain out of my tent, says the same leader, and may the devil take you and burn you throughout eternity. Eternity is a long time. Fire is a terrible thing. The thought of eternal punishment with fire not only causes man to fear death, it often causes him to lose his reason. It destroys interest in life and makes happiness impossible. During my research, I reviewed a book entitled A Catalog of the Gods, in which were listed the 30,000 gods which man has worshipped. Think of it, 30,000 of them, represented by everything from a crawfish to a man. It is a little wonder that men have become frightened at the approach of death. While the religious leaders may not be able to provide safe conduct into heaven, nor by lack of such provision allow the unfortunate to descend into hell, the possibility of the latter seems so terrible that the very thought of it lays hold of the imagination in such a realistic way that it paralyzes reason and sets up the fear of death. In truth, no man knows, and no man has ever known, what heaven or hell is like, nor does any man know if either place actually exists. This very lack of positive knowledge opens the door of the human mind to the charlatan so he may enter and control that mind with his stock of various brands of pious fraud and trickery. The fear of death is not as common now as it was during the age when there were no great colleges and universities. Men of science have turned the spotlight of truth upon the world and this truth is rapidly freeing men and women from this terrible fear of death. The young men and young women who attend the colleges and universities are not easily impressed by fire and brimstone. Through the aid of biology, astronomy, geology, and other related sciences, the fears of the dark ages which gripped the minds of men and destroyed their reason have been dispelled. Insane, asylum, insane asylums are filled with men and women who have gone mad because of the fear of death. This fear is useless. Death will come, no matter what anyone may think about it. Accept it as a necessity and pass the thought out of your mind. It must be a necessity or it would not come at all. Perhaps it is not as bad as it has been pictured. The entire world is made up of only two things, energy and matter. In elementary physics, we learn that neither matter nor energy, the only two realities known to man, can be created nor destroyed. Both matter and energy can be transformed, but neither can be destroyed. Life is energy, if it is anything. If neither energy nor matter can be destroyed, of course life cannot be destroyed. Life, like other forms of energy, may be passed through various processes of transition or change, but it cannot be destroyed. Death is mere transition. If death is not mere change or transition, then nothing comes after death except a long, eternal, peaceful sleep, and sleep is nothing to be feared. Thus, you may wipe out forever the fear of death. Symptoms of the fear of death. The general symptoms of this fear are the habit of thinking about dying instead of making the most of life, due generally to lack of purpose or lack of a suitable occupation. This fear is more prevalent among the aged, but sometimes the more youthful are victims of it. The greatest of all remedies for the fear of death is a burning desire for achievement. 
backed by useful service to others. A busy person seldom has time to think about dying. He finds life too thrilling to worry about death. Sometimes the fear of death is so closely associated with the fear of poverty where one's death would leave loved ones poverty-stricken. In other cases, the fear of death is caused by illness and the consequent breaking down of physical body resistance. The commonest causes of the fear of death are ill health, poverty, lack of appropriate occupation, disappointment over love, insanity, religious fanaticism. Old man worry. Worry is a state of mind based upon fear. It works slowly, but persistently. It is insidious and subtle. Step by step, it digs itself in until it paralyzes one's reasoning faculty, destroys self-confidence and initiative. Worry is a form of sustained fear caused by indecision. Therefore, it is a state of mind which can be controlled. An unsettled mind is helpless. Indecision makes an unsettled mind. Most individuals lack the willpower to reach decisions promptly and to stand by them after they've been made, even during normal business conditions. During periods of economic unrest, such as the world recently experienced, the individual is handicapped not only by his inherent nature to be slow at reach, reaching decisions, but he is influenced by the indecision of others around him who have created a state of mass indecision. During the Depression, the whole atmosphere all over the world was filled with fiorenza and worryitis, the two mental disease germs which began to spread themselves after the Wall Street frenzy in 1929. There is only one known antidote for these germs. It is a habit of prompt and firm decision. Moreover, it is an antidote which every individual must apply for himself. We do not worry over conditions once we have reached a decision to follow a definite line of action. I once interviewed a man who was to be electrocuted two hours later. The condemned man was the calmest of some eight men who were in the death cell with him. His calmness prompted me to ask him how it felt to know he was going into eternity in a short while. With a smile of confidence on his face, he says, it feels fine. Just think, brother, my troubles will soon be over. I have had nothing but trouble all my life. It has been a hardship to get food and clothing. Soon I will not need these things. I have felt fine ever since I learned for certain that I must die. I made up my mind then to accept my fate in good spirit. As he spoke, he devoured a dinner of proportion sufficient for three men, eating every mouthful of the food brought to him and apparently enjoying it as much as if no disaster awaited him. Decision gave this man resignation to his fate. Decision can also prevent one's acceptance of undesired circumstances. The six basic fears become translated into a state of worry through indecision. Relieve yourself forever of the fear of death by reaching a decision to accept death as an inescapable event. Whip the fear of poverty by reaching a decision to get along with whatever wealth you can accumulate without worry. Put your foot upon the neck of the fear of criticism by reaching a decision not to worry about what other people think, do, or say. Eliminate the fear of old age by reaching a decision to accept it, not as a handicap, but as a great blessing which carries with it wisdom, self-control, and understanding not known to youth. Acquit yourself of the fear of ill health by the decision to forget symptoms. Master the fear of loss of love by reaching a decision to get along without love if that is necessary. Kill the habit of worry in all its forms by reaching a general blanket decision that nothing which life has to offer is worth the price of worry. With this decision will come poise, peace of mind, and calmness of thought which will bring happiness. A man whose mind is filled with fear not only destroys his own chances of intelligent action, but he transmits these destructive vibrations to the minds of all who come into contact with him and destroys also their chances. Even a dog or a horse knows when its master lacks courage. Moreover, a dog or a horse will pick up the vibrations of fear thrown off by its master and behave accordingly. Lower down the line of intelligence in the animal kingdom, one finds the same capacity to pick up the vibrations of fear. A honeybee immediately senses fear in the mind of a person. For reasons unknown, a bee will sting the person whose mind is releasing vibrations of fear much more readily than it will molest the person whose mind registers no fear. 
The vibrations of fear pass from one mind to another just as quickly and as surely as the sound of the human voice passes from the broadcasting station to the receiving set of a radio and by the self-same medium. Mental telepathy is a reality. Thoughts pass from one mind to another voluntarily, whether or not this fact is recognized by either the person releasing the thoughts or the persons who pick up these thoughts. The person who gives expression by word of mouth to negative or destructive thoughts is practically certain to experience the results of those words in the form of de destructive kickback. The release of destructive thought impulses alone without the aid of words produces also a kickback in more ways than one. First of all, and perhaps most important to be remembered, the person who releases thoughts of a destructive nature must suffer damage through the breaking down of the faculty of creative imagination. Secondly, the presence in the mind of any destructive emotion develops a negative personality which repels people and often converts them into antagonists. The third source of damage to the person who entertains or releases negative thoughts lies in this significant fact. These thought impulses are not only damaging to others, but they embed themselves in the subconscious mind of the person releasing them, and there become a part of his character. One is never through with the thought merely by releasing it. When a thought is released, it spreads in every direction through the medium of the ether, but it also plants itself permanently in the subconscious mind of the person releasing it. Your business in life is presumably, presumably to achieve success. To be successful, you must find peace of mind, acquire the material needs of life, and above all, attain happiness. All of these evidences of success begin in the form of thought impulses. You may control your own mind. You have the power to feed it whatever you, thought impulses you choose. With this privilege goes also the responsibility of using it constructively. You are the master of your own earthly destiny, just as surely as you have the power to control your own thoughts. You may influence, direct, and eventually control your own environment, making your life what you want it to be. Or you may neglect to exercise the privilege which is yours to make your life to order, thus casting yourself upon the broad sea of circumstance, while you would be tossed hither and yon like a chip on the waves of the ocean. Wow. Okay, that was that was a uh, long reading. Thank you, success, Sean. I did. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I stumbled and um, just ignored that word. Appreciate that. Hi, Sarah, Cindy. Good to see you, Bill. Welcome. Oh, a lot in there, but really, what it comes down to is. We have control of our thoughts. I like what he said about, uh, you know, back in the day, the fear of death was caused by uh, the fanaticism of religion instead of what I view religion as, which is a uh, blueprint for how to live. And a community that is doing it together. Just so you know, that's my view of religion. An old man worry definitely is a state of mind. If you pray, why worry? If you worry, why pray? That's say that a lot. And when I forget to say it, I tend to worry a bit. And then we talked about, um, you know, if you're, if your thoughts are released, somebody's going to get them. They're going to pick up on them. Yeah, we have control of our now. I know. So Matt, you replace awareness acceptance with his description of decision in that one section. And which section would that be? Because I've already moved on to another. I like um, about decision. I'm going to make the decision not to be. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, and actually, I'm... Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. And I have to say, Matt, that one thing that I have learned is, in all honesty, when I truly make a decision of how I'm going to act or how I'm going to move forward or move past um, a particular type of instance, or I'm trying to change something about myself, 
I, I make a real decision that when in that position again, I will act this way, not this way. And it takes a lot of thought. It's not, and my experience has been, it's not like a one and done. I make that decision, but that decision becomes a part of how I think until I know I've made that decision. I feel solid in the decision. Yes, it, it cuts off alternatives. Plus, Sean, it also, um, it just, it removes the hesitancy. You know, just as those who study self-defense in whatever form um, know by through training what they will do when a particular action is taken against them, a physical action. Um, I equate it also to my own experience of with um, the shooting of guns. You know, I shot muzzleloaders uh, for many, many years and shot, began to prep for competition. And then most recently in the past uh, 10 years or so have shot modern guns. Um, but the decision was made ahead of time that the shooting will only occur at target practice and it will be done not in a uh, community setting. I don't go to a rifle range. We're outside in a safe place. And decision was made ahead of time of how I will approach the shooting of those guns. Now, having trained and done that, when I was in muzzleloaders, this is what I'm remembering from the training. I made the decision through the training that if it were to be done in self-defense, how would I do that? Would I be able to? Oh, and how would I act? And there's other instances that I've learned how to make those decisions of when, when I enter a situation, how, I've already decided how I will act ahead of time, preparation and what have you. So I think I, the decision is pretty solid. It's, I think it's more, um, <sighs> more permanent, let's put that. Choice implies a high degree of awareness. I honestly think there are some people so reactive, unaware, they can reach a learned, a deep learned helplessness because the subconscious and live their life floating like a chip on the waves of the ocean. Absolutely, I've met them. I've met them and um, I say I met them. I don't hang around them. They're not a regular part of my life because there's nothing more annoying than somebody that um, simply reacts. But I also, I, I also um, apply that. I'm going to throw this out there. How's that? Uh, moral relativism. You see, I believe also that the decisions I've made on my values and my moral uh, system, my moral compass, those were decisions that are made, which tells me how, how I will react to things and how I will not respond, if you will. And those that don't have that, they're chips, you know, they're on the waves of the ocean, whatever the current crisis is, they'll be a part of um, whatever the current, um, current thing that is labeled as evil is, is uh, without thought, they'll just jump on and say, Oh, well, it wasn't bad 15 years ago, but it's horrifying now. So it must be bad. That's one way to explain it. I know it goes deeper. The greatest of all remedies for the fear of death is a burning desire for achievement backed by useful service to, to others. Oh, I, and I love that. I love that. Everything he's talking about is, uh, you know, so you go, I could go very simple and just simply say that um, work brings dignity to us because it gives us focus. And for those of us that want more than just work, to bring focus we want to be a little bit more deeper thought is what is my major definite purpose and if it includes working for somebody else that's fine as long as it's my major definite purpose that I'm working towards and my why and it helps me to stay on the path that I've chosen over the years and the one that I've just that I decided years ago now that's internal I want to be better so I'm exploring how mentally I can be better and, and think things through. It is, is what I chose for myself really good for me? 
yeah, so I made those decisions and the self-examination can tell me whether or not it served me. I think we get a little into that in the next in the next section of reading. I also, <laughs> so did anybody else think of this? All right, so fear of death is useless. It's going to come, right? So Napoleon Hill is telling us that life is energy if it's anything. And neither energy nor matter can be destroyed. Um, death is just a mere transition. If it's not a mere transition, then nothing comes after death except this long, eternal, peaceful sleep. And all the while that I was reading that, I'm thinking, so in the end, what the heck does it really matter what I'm doing now? Yes, my mind went there. Does it really matter? Fear of death comes from either fear of the unknown, fear of losing the status quo, fear of change of what is. Hmm. I don't fear death. I've come too close to it to fear it. Um, I think that helps. Also helps that um, I believe in a power greater than myself, whom I call God, that tells me and the religion that I adhere to as a Christian, what happens after death, which is a transition. It is a transformation, right? So I have that. But I don't fear it, nor do I fear growing old. Hi, Ron. Hi. Because uh, I'm the first one to tell you I'm 51 and damn grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a problem with that. Yeah. You know? well, Not at all. I, Ooh, let's have another birthday. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm 69 and it's the same same feeling. Grateful to be here. Darn right. Uh, I think I like you, uh, possibly. I, I don't know your story on that end, but uh, yeah, I guess I came close a few years ago and didn't realize how close I came. Um, but I used to be afraid and feared death. Um, but my mother-in-law kind of took me away from that. Um, she was the, her first husband who passed away was a, a Lutheran minister and, and, uh, uh, she was the wife of a minister and, and, um, had a strong faith and, um, but I learned from her that she, she just wasn't afraid when it was her time and we were fortunate I don't know if you look at it, it's a strange way to look at it, but we were fortunate to be with her when she passed. And uh, we, we actually moved into the house with her when she passed. And those last days with her, I learned more from her in those last days than I did years of, uh, of being down here with her. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I saw what happened to her and how peaceful she was, it's like, I'm, there's no reason for me to fear death. Uh, so I went back with um, a renewal of, I'm just going to do what I got to do. I'm going to, you know, try to be a better person than I am. And um, if, if, if that happens, which I did, it has, I have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, then if people remember me for that and for, for being, giving them some kind of inspiration and motivation. Um, maybe that's what I was put here for. And, uh, but I, I don't fear death. I, I don't even fear going out in the street and, you know, somebody shooting me or whatever. It's like, it, it just doesn't bother me anymore. Like it used to. Good news indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you think? Um, or do you have thoughts in addition to that? Thank you for sharing about um, just worry about making decisions ahead of time to guide our actions. Well, the only decisions I think, and they've changed and, I, and, I, and my wife and I have to do it. We definitely have to uh, change our wills and, and make them out and, and get a, a, a plan set. So everything is in order. I, I, I know that. And, uh, that's the only thing I can say as far as a change in, in, uh -huh. or taking action. Um, I don't, I don't know about any other action. Um, I, I too have a strong faith. 
I I don't get to church because I I can't sit for long periods of time with my back problems, and I can't walk without a walker. But uh, um, I do have a strong faith, and I do have a belief uh, that uh, there is an afterlife, and uh, um, you know so things it's the that same I same with you that it's just a transformation. Yeah. It isn't a it isn't just this long endless dark sleep of nothing. No, I, I, yeah. my, my, my faith in God tells me that I don't think he would, that's something that he would do to us. You know, I, I think we're, we're here on this earth as, a, um, I've been taught and I believe that we're here, uh, uh, as a part of that sacrifice that, that Jesus made for us because of the, the sins that Adam and Eve committed in the garden of Eden. So, uh, I don't want to get into a long involved thing on, yeah, on religion. Not, I appreciate but, where you're coming from though. And it helps to know where you're coming from. And, and I, I, I just think that, um, you know, it, it's, it, he has something planned for us after we live our life here on earth. So that takes away the fear of death. Now, Matt had said something about um, acceptance and I'm going to get up here, Matt. I'm going to see it again. He often replaces the one about decision, right? The description of decision that Napoleon Hill walks us through. We can decide to change our thoughts um, with awareness and acceptance. Um, we're going to get a little deep here, a little <laughs> deeper. Hi, Anita. Welcome. Good to see you, Chuck. Had me a little concerned, didn't see you here. Good to see you. So what I liked was, have you ever had the experience of you being afraid and an animal picking up on it? Because yes. you know, Napoleon Hill talks about the dog and the horse. Now, I'm a horse rider, and I can tell you that one of the things that uh, I tackled really quickly as a kid was no fear. You just jump on that sector, and that's how you control them, is to tell them through your no fear that it doesn't matter what you think or believe I'm in charge and they'll um, they'll respond and one of the things I know to be true is people respond the same way you know I mean how do we how do we view somebody who is in authority and how can how's this how can a mother who is five foot two in her 50s not me in her 50s, have complete control of boys who are six foot something, right? Teenage or 60 some odd years old. To a little five foot two spitfire. She has authority. She has no fear. She has courage. She just, boom, walks in and says, this is the way things are. Am I right? I think it's because she uh, taught them that respect from the time they were born. But if they, they're not her sons, not her sons. See, I, uh, this is where I'm coming from. All right. Yeah, so I'm, okay, I'm, I, in, I'm in a pool hall last night. Pool hall. I go, I, every Sunday night, you can find me at this pool hall. I shoot pool there. I'm, you know, I'm a competitor, uh, competitive uh, pool player and on a team and a league, the whole bit, right? Which is awesome. But the best place to watch a microcosm of human interaction is right there. And we have a, an older gal. She's about five foot two, and um, she's uh, she's not descript when she first walks into the room. But I've watched her, and I got to tell you that every man that she comes up across, you can watch them stand a little taller, and they they're a little more gentle with her. And over time, what I have noticed is she doesn't know them personally. She, this isn't like they have years of experience with this woman. It's just watching her interact. You want something done, you're going to go to her and she'll get the guys to do it. You know, And it's because she has this sense of authority. She, it's Teachers do the same thing who are well trained in how to control a classroom. That sense of authority that comes through. I have no fear. I know what I'm going to do. I know why I'm here. And this is how things happen. That's what I was seeing out of what I read, is that we transmit, now Napoleon Hill is saying it's mental telepathy. 
uh, law of attraction, which is a Napoleon Hill term, by the way. Am I going to attract people to me because of what I think, which affects how I act? But also, is he saying it's the transmission of the thoughts? You are picking up what I'm thinking. Um, or am I going to repel people? So do, am I filled with fear and therefore do not attract those who are going to help and be a part of my being better and growing? Or am I going to be filled with confidence and no fear and solid decision and purpose and attract those who are on board with helping me to move forward? I, and think, have we, their own? I think we transmit those feelings and people pick up on them. Uh -huh. um, and uh I, I'll give you an example. We had where I live now, there's um, there were a couple of kids that lived in the back and they had friends and, and uh, you know, they, they would be uh, they old enough to know better, but you know, when the mom wasn't around, they were doing stuff that shouldn't have been. And, uh -huh. and we had problems with some theft in the neighborhood, beautiful neighborhood, but still have the problems. Don't and I saw this people. car parked in a driveway where the people were back up North. They were, they were, they weren't here for the season and there were two two guys in the car and my neighbor who was a single young woman said ron i don't know what's going on here but can you come out and take a look so i took a look and she stayed in the garage and watched and i walked up to the car knocked on the car i said what are you guys doing here and um at first they didn't say well I'm with my friend next door well why aren't you parked in his driveway mm-hmm uh -huh. And, you know, I went through the whole thing and then the, the, the kids came out from that, you know, from, from the house that they were supposed to be at. And it's one big guy is like six foot something and, you know, a, a bruiser. And right. these two guys get out of the car and, you know, now they got some backup and they're starting to talk. And this big guy says something. I says, look, I said, I don't know who you are and I don't care. I'm not looking for a problem, but if you're going to give me one, be prepared because I'm going to give you one back. Uh -huh. And these kids all backed down. And the young woman, after it was all over, she was in her garage. She came out. She said, Ron, I don't believe you did that. I said, well, you can either be afraid and walk away or you can stand up to them and let them know where the bear did what in the woods. And I said, yeah. that's what and I did. Excellent. And that is a great example of what Napoleon Hill is telling us is that we have that confidence to to act a particular way, just as you did. And also, he's telling us that the you walked in with that confidence and with the thoughts that this BS isn't going to happen. You know, you do, and that's what supported it. And they picked up on it as you were, um, you know, as you were approaching them and it came through in your words. So let's go a little deeper. And what Napoleon Hill is telling us is that the person who gives expression by word of mouth to negative can have it in the form of the kickback. And the same thing applies in the positive. So again, what are we transmitting? As you said, you can pick up on emotions, right? Yes. Um, I used to be very leery of the idea that we're transmitting our thoughts, that you're picking up on my thoughts, because I, I thought of it in terms of the literal, which I tend to do. You know, I'm an engineer. I tend to think literally. So when I don't think literally, then it's that just impression right, that I'm in this group or I'm around you or I'm picking up, um, you know, that my my gut's telling me something or uh, <clears throat> finishing your sentence because we're all caught up in a creative imagination session or something. Um, so it does happen. So how do I um, control my thoughts so that Fear is not my master, so that success and happiness are, or faith, right? How do I master that? And that's what Napoleon Hill is giving us. He's giving us the keys to be able to master our thoughts so that we can be, be more. And, and I look at it as so that I can be more personally, and the result will be that I'll be able to attain 
the um, riches that I want in terms of money, it's beginning to happen you know, because I've gone through purposeful effort to do what we've been reading these past months, um, changing a little bit of how I've been approaching things. It's things are happening, you know, it's showing itself to actually work pretty cool, you know, um, it's because what I was doing before wasn't working. So just throwing that out there. I think it's experience and confidence over a lifetime. You, you, you know, uh, for me, I was, as a kid, I was kind of treated and bullied a little bit, you know, and, but my parents said, ah, eh, words don't hurt you, you know, and, and, you know, just laugh at them. Uh -huh. And that was my defense. And, but I still had this for the longest period of time, uh, you know, not being confident and, and stuff. And, but over years I realized, why am I letting these people run over me like this? I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Right. And, and I changed my ways, not in a nasty way, but I just took a good look, started reading some books and, and, uh, took a good look at where I was and what was happening to me and decided this is no way for me to live. I'm changing. Exactly. And, and I did that. And, but it was an experience over a lifetime. Hopefully young people can get it earlier. Um, and uh, I, well, I, some I, well I, and I some won't. but I think that I don't, it's not a requirement to have it be an experience of a lifetime. Honestly, I believe that if somebody is tired of where they are now, that, it's just simply a matter of asking where should I go for the answer to change. Yeah, you get you get all of a sudden you get you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And it's um I want to be different. I don't or I see somebody, I'm exposed to somebody that I've never um I've never experienced that kind of energy or that kind of thought or, or that perspective before, you know, I poo pooed it or um, I, I was frightened of it because it was so very different, but <clears throat> something stuck because there was something missing in me or the person that's looking for um, how to change. That's what I like about the Think and Grow Rich. It's telling us the how to, this isn't just, a, just random um, out of the ether, theories of of um coulda woulda shoulda or um what have you it is um it, it this is you know his study his study of over 500 people and this is what he's come to these conclusions of a lot of the you know, most of them the similarities between these successful people they have I, control of their thoughts which hmm. controlled who was attracted to them and who came um to them you know who's going to work with me who's going to be a part of my inner circle who's going to be a part of my network who's going to be you know i, oh, I hate to do this i came in late again and i have no, to leave you early. Gotta take off. Ron, and okay. uh, and and thank you again i enjoyed the visit and i'll catch you again charlene thank oh you. thank you dear your comments were great i loved having you here we'll see you next time so again um Lots of things to discuss, actually. I mean, do you believe in that mental telepathy? Um, do you believe in, um, or do you understand, or does it make sense to you that the ability to make a prompt and firm decision can be made a habit? How can that happen? How can that happen? Experience, practice, um, taught? taught critical thinking to determine um, to determine what <sighs> critical thinking to be able to ask appropriate questions quickly so you can discern the appropriate mode of action and make that decision I think that can be taught fear and he lists so many of them that the antidote is um, control your mind. You do have power to feed it whatever, right? So why not feed it something that is helpful? Because you are the master of your own earthly destiny. Um, and when you realize that, this is the other thing that I just caught. You're the master of your own earthly destiny. 
um, with this privilege goes also the responsibility of using it constructively. So the moment that I fully understand that I am the master of my own destiny, I now accept the responsibility to use that power of my ability to feed my own thoughts and impulses constructively and make a decision to do it constructively. Again, random thoughts coming out there. Anybody wants to uh, share their thoughts, please do in the comment section or in the seat. Um, and then comes the wisdom of um, understanding that the crisis that we are in right now is not the end all be all. And I think that's part of what comes through experience. You have faith that'll get you through when you haven't had any experience. And even the faith alone sometimes isn't quite enough to remove the anxiety and fear, but it's enough to at least keep you walking forward. And I know instances of where it's, it, thank goodness, there are people around to keep reminding the person that you just keep going forward. Trust me, I've been through something similar or my own experience says you're going to make through this. Don't worry how I know this, you will make it through it. So that encouragement from that inner circle of people makes a big difference. But once it's experienced and recognized as I was very, very afraid. I did it anyway. I came out okay. I not only survived, but I thrived. I learned something. Then the next experience that comes can be tackled a little differently. And I look at that as a way of how we change our thoughts towards things and how we can master the fear. Um, so, any other thoughts? Of course, Rocco stopped in and then took off on me. Let me call him back. So mastering our fears. Acquit yourself of the fear of ill health by the decision to forget symptoms. Instead of worrying about uh, being ill and not feeling well, how about if we think about how wonderful it is to feel good and to have energy? And then, of course, anything that we're afraid of, I know it, it tends to uh, go to other people, right? We have that effect on other people. So what can we do today? This is what I think we can do today, is to make the decision that I will not be ruled by emotion and circumstance, but instead... I will take control of my own thoughts and decide for myself what I will be doing towards the vision that I have for the life that I want. I think that can be a solid decision. And by doing that alone, clears up some worry because I know it's going to happen. Things are already, the plan I put into place is uh, working, right? I'm seeing um, that the work that I've put into it, I, I keep looking at my major definite purpose, which I read this morning. Um, and that, you know, there's the, it's working. So I'm taking action. I made the decision that I will take action. I made the decision that I will, there are some things I won't do. <laughs> Chuck, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. But you know what? I've never, th have you ever thought about it with yourself? There's the question. Yes, Uncle Ben Parker said that in Spider-Man. And yes, it is in the Bible. I've always thought of it, though, as a leader who has the power over the masses. What Napoleon Hill is doing for me is to understand that I have that same level of power with myself, that I can put myself in whatever state of mind I choose. And that I think that 
we can be taught how to do that. Obviously, that's what Napoleon Hill is telling us. But I also think that there are many, many of us who've never been taught how to make those choices. I've never been taught that we are in control of our thoughts, that it is our thoughts that control our feelings and our actions, that they're all they're intertwined, but we can control ourselves. Many, many who don't understand that. And those are the ones that are that ride the wave, whatever the next wave is. Um, what we affectionately refer to as sheep or cows who can be herded and influenced easily. Um, I don't tend to be one of those personally. <laughs> Hello, Erin. Good to have you with us. Um, so again, mass hysteria, mass depression, mass, mass worry. We had that during the, the recession, didn't we? Panic was it was happening. People were losing their homes. Mortgages, foreclosures were happening. Story after story after story. The struggle of finding jobs that simply were not there in the area that people were in. Um, people responding. Some responded by starting their own business. Others responded by giving up. And others still responded by hunkering down and combining resources um, with those who had resources and um, and yet we still have the whole mass of worry and panic. I think the same thing happens today with the fear of terror, with the fear of, of um, protection, lack of protection when you walk out the door. Like Ron had said, he wasn't afraid. He just you have to take care of things. And then, of course, coming from an all-American household and one of uh, independence and individual um, thinking and self-reliance is the um, is the idea. It's is the thought that. Um, just because you tell me I should be afraid doesn't mean that I should be. So a lot of random thoughts out there. Uh, yeah, Eric, it's okay to be afraid, but feel it and do it anyway, knowing you're going to be okay. It's normal. I agree. Fear is normal. Try not to be afraid doesn't work, knowing you are afraid and confident to overcome it. Yes, recognize it. Recognize it. That's part of the process of maintaining control and controlling myself and controlling yourself, right? I mean, I'm afraid to make that phone call. I'm afraid to walk out the door because I know know what's, what's out there um, or I don't know what's out there. I'm afraid to do new things. I'm afraid um, based on previous experience, I had two or three out of five or six that were horrifying. So therefore, that's the only way it can turn out if I go into the same situation. Tend to, um, one thing that I would tend to do, and this is something that is a big change that happened quite a while, quite a while back, is completely focus on um, that which didn't work. You know how we tend to gravitate towards the negative, right? Well, it didn't work before. Why should it work now? And um, when we completely focus on that, nothing gets done and nothing new happens. And that's the fear that it's going to happen the same way. And yet reality says, <laughs> and the truth is, that we're, we're still, even though I am physically the same person, I am not mentally the same person, nor am I dealing with the same people. The situation appears similar, but it's completely different. It's a new day. Um, so that helps. That helps to walk through the fear. There are a lot of ways to walk through it and to just do it anyway. And Napoleon Hill is telling us it's all in our thoughts. Think it through. Oh, and then do it anyway. I finally learned how to do that. You know, one of the things, I'll, I'll tell you this, I was never taught how to fail. never taught. What that means is that anything that I attempted as a kid, if I didn't do it, if it didn't succeed, I was never, 
I was never shown, I wasn't shown how to review what I did so that I would do it differently and try again. Instead, it was try something different. And it even wasn't, um, and what that means is that it wasn't a complete failure. If I'm willing to do it again, is something that was, um, and I had a, had a bit of a success, so I would continue to do that. Um, but if I failed, if it was too hard, it wasn't told to me how to look at it, learn from it, and move forward. I learned that as an adult, and uh, that was definitely something I could have, could have used when I was younger, in the 20s and my 30s. Um, it just... And I, it, I don't know that it was failure wasn't an option. That what that wasn't the thought. The thought was try it. Oh, you didn't like it. You didn't do well at it. Well, then do something else. It wasn't. Oh, you didn't do well. Well, why didn't you do well? Why don't you do this instead? Try, try it a different way. Um, what went wrong? Was it you? Was it the other people? Was it uh, the process? Was it the tools? What went wrong? Hmm. I had to learn that as an adult and where I learned it, part of it, you know, I learned it in teams in the engineering field. Part of it I learned in the customer service field, um, watching other people. You know. Oh yeah, I didn't know how to have an argument either. Mm. Yeah, I had parents who didn't fight in front of us. They didn't argue. Yeah, thanks Brian, that's, a, that's another one. If you're not taught, if you don't see it, so, until I see it elsewhere, until I'm told it's a problem, or it, it becomes obvious that it's a problem, why would I seek to change it? Hmm. Well, it gets in the way, right? My husband taught me how to argue, and it was scary as all get out, because I, I grew up in soft-voiced, passive type of household, more intellectuals. That's really what it was. Intellectuals think things through, talk it out, debate. Um, and even when it got heated in debate because you're trying to make a point, it was calmed down. So, and, and that was just across the board at the dinner table. No need to raise your voice. State your position clearly, succinctly, concisely. Back it up with, with facts and um, or what appear to be facts. That's how you learn how to present yourself so you have influence. Um, but when there were disagreements or what have you, then uh, that was all that was all done on the side. Honestly, you know, come to think of it, Brian, it was a big shock to us. I was in well into my 20s, so at 25 or 26 when my parents divorced, and we were just stunned. And later found out that from my mother... It's funny. Uh, she wanted to argue, and my father would walk away. That was something that I learned later from her. She said he, she always wanted to argue it through, to get it out, to um, talk things through, to get to a conclusion, to express the, the anger, and he would just walk away. Isn't that interesting? Huh. So, again, those things that were taught... You're going to fear, face your fear of exercise. Okay. That's cool, Aaron. It was good to have you here. Uh, I'm here every weekday morning, 8 o'clock. We read a little bit and we discuss. Usually there's somebody in the, in the open seat joining in the discussion. Not always, though. Sometimes they like to just sit back and listen to Charlene ramble. Okay. Random thoughts. Um... I do like that Eric brought out about being afraid doesn't work because it's that's what paralyzes us. And that's what Napoleon Hill says. Um, when I feel the fear, take a look at it, think it through, change it. Because my business in life is to achieve success and to be successful, I must find peace of mind, acquire the material needs of life and above all attain happiness. And all of those begin in the form of thought processes of which I have reasonable control and I want more. 
All right, I want to thank everybody for being here. We're going to shut down the recording um, and finish that portion of the program. I can be here or I can keep the room open for another 45 minutes or so if you so like to join me in additional conversation. I want to thank those who joined me in the live stream. Ron, it was good to see you. Those in the comment section, thank you so much for contributing. Um, made for some good, thoughtful thoughtful things for myself, I hope for you as well. Those who've been watching the replay, thanks for hanging in there with us and uh, check us out on Blab, right? So this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose, with purpose, to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. 